another great episode for you this week. I'm so excited with my guest. Um, Antonia Harmon is who's joining me. So excited to get into her story and what she's all about. So Antonia is joining us from across the pond. She's, are you in London? Yes, I'm in London. She's in London. It's like, how cool is that? So Antonia and I have known each other for a very, very long time. And when I started this podcast, I really wanted to kick off like the first, you know, month or so of shows just with like powerhouse, awesome, badass women. So yeah. how have you been? What What are you into? What do you go? What do you got going on these days? Because last time we talked, it, we only got a, I got a snippet of what you yeah. do, but I'm doing some really interesting things. Okay. So Tell basically, me. um, my name's Antonia Harmon. My company's divine empowerment and I dissolve trauma. Mm. So instantly, basically. So people come to me and they have a variety of different issues, but all I need them to do is think about the situation to sort of open Pandora's box as, a, as it were, to just sort of feel into the situation. And then that's that's energy, uh, emotion is energy in motion. So as soon as it's available, uh, as soon as someone starts thinking about it, and everyone knows that emotion is energy because when you hang around somebody who's sad or angry or upset, you spend two seconds with them, you immediately know that they're upset. You can feel their vibe in two seconds. So um, that's I've just taken that one step, stage further and I dissolve traumas. And actually, yeah. I've been doing some really weird, like I did something the other day which was incredible, which just blew me away, which I thought I'd share with you guys. I've actually please, got please, 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 please. It was on my it's on my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful I managed to get this live on on uh, on film, and I put it onto my YouTube, um, and it's just incredible. So I was working on this healing, and I was working about ten people at the same time. And I just normally what I do is I'll do uh, we'll, we'll always work on the same thing. So maybe it's a breakup or grief or whatever the situation yeah. is. But we'll get everyone to always do the same thing. And I just had a harebrained idea in the middle of it. And I said, oh, let's just everyone do whatever you want to do. Whatever is bothering you, anything which is like a real like big trauma that you've got, I'll work on that for you. So everyone just chose whatever they chose. And I turned everybody's microphones off. I double checked that I turned everyone's microphones off because it gets distracting. So I turned everyone's microphones off and then I, I, you know, I was just coming to the end and there's someone just went, wow. And I went, hello, who are you? And what's just happened? And she says, my name's Karen. She goes, my endometriosis, polycystic ovaries and her depression went like that. They vanished. They've, they've not been back. It's been over two months. I've got an updated video that I need to post of hers, but it's completely, completely gone. She does three diseases just vanished. Amazing. 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 <laughs> Mad. Wow. Wow. So how did you, did you always know you were a healer? Like, did you, did you have signs of it as a kid or did it, how did that come about for you? Not really. I might no. I don't come. I don't remember. I don't remember discussing healing when no, we were. I was a TV out. host. I was a TV host yeah. back in the day. That's what yeah. I was doing. You know. Yeah. No, I didn't expect this to happen to me. It's just I literally had the. You know, someone came to my house and they wiggled their fingers and I said, "You're getting rid of ghosts." And she said, "Yes." And she goes, "If you're that psychic, you should do a class." And I went. All right. And then I said, if the money comes and I'll do this class, the money just sort of appeared in my lap. Of course. And then I ended up doing this course and I just thought, this is so strange. I'm not sure I believe it. I was totally a different sort of person back then, as you know, yeah. I just wasn't into these sorts. I just thought it was all very strange. And it like, and I went on the course and the people were, they didn't look very healthy and they were all wearing cheesecloth and I was like, you know, <laughs> bouncing around and, you know, wild. And, um, and I just, like, I didn't think they were my people. I didn't know what the situation was. And I just didn't, I didn't really get it. I was just totally just I, like a duck out of water. I didn't understand anything. Anyway, yeah. my, uh, my dear friend had burst her eardrum five times and she was a stewardess of Virgin Atlantic and she'd often get grounded in various different locations around the world. She actually had one situation when she was in New York where she ran downstairs in the depths of winter and she was just had some trainers like a coat on on she just hadn't properly dressed she just like in her pajamas but mm -hmm. she just had to run downstairs and she was just in the in the aisle and just necking Tylenol and you know just in the aisle of a 
yeah. a drugstore. Um, and she just, she was just, because she was in so much pain, she was just, you know, in the aisle, just like ripping over, you know, like that. She was in so much pain. And yeah. she said it was comparable to childbirth through her ear. So oh. it was, you know, terrible to her. And she said two kids since and said, yeah, still says the same, it was worse than childbirth. So <laughs> anyway, so she kept on bursting it. And when you have a burst eardrum, you can't fly very often because you, yeah if it goes again then you're gonna to have to land the plane it can be dangerous it can be life-threatening potentially so anyway so she couldn't fly a lot of the time got stranded in these different locations so she went to the doctor the specialist and the surgeon and she said look um can i get this surgery and we have the nhs in the uk so most surgery would be free so they said no this isn't going to be free and it's the amount of money that it is in the uk is going to sound like nothing to an american audience it was four and a half thousand pounds which is about seven thousand dollars six seven six or seven thousand dollars yeah which would be nothing to an American, but to an English that's like person, after insurance free here. surgery. That's, yeah, that's what you'd pay after insurance. Right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's the whole surgery. So it's four and a half thousand pounds, probably about six thousand dollars. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that to, to an English person, that's ridiculous because all the surgery is included because we pay taxes towards it. We have the NHS. Mm-hmm. So she was, you know, twenty five, and that's a lot of money. And you know, what are you going to do about it? So, um, and they said, anyway, it's only a 50% chance it's going to work and it's going to cost you $6,000. So she was like, well, what do I do? So she's having to get the money together. She's getting a loan. She's figuring it out. She just needs to get the money to do it. So I'm walking down the street with her and, uh, but 50% chance of it working is still not a very good odds, but what can you do? So she's walking the street and she falls to her knees. She's walking in Notting Hill Mm -hmm. and uh, she just falls to her knees and starts screaming, ah, my ear, my ear, help me, help me, fix my ear, fix my ear. Lots of swearing as well, I won't yeah. <laughs> yeah. include, but you know, there was like, fix my ear, help me, help me. And I said, fix your ear. What do you mean fix your ear? And she said, you're a healer now. And I said, what? what? I mean, yeah, I, we haven't covered ears. I've done a five day workshop. What do you mean fix your ear? I don't think, what, I don't know anything about your ear. She says, just, just try, just try, just please just try. I don't know how to help you anyway. So I take her into the loo of a, of a restaurant. I put my hands on her ears and I started channeling energy. And to my utter surprise, something is coming out and it looks like a heat, um, a snake in heat waves. And I'm pulling this thing out and I'm feeding it, I'm feeding it, and I'm feeding it. And it comes out and, it, and it's about a foot and a half long. And it's like, I don't know, like that fat. Um, and, and she was screaming, going, get it out, get it out. I pull it out, get it on the floor. It's squirming around, moving around. You can just see the snake moving about. She, she's screaming, goes, do the other side, do the other side. I did the other side. It's about six inches long, a bit narrower. Same thing, squirming around, threw some energy at it. And that was in 2007. And my friend has not had Eric since. Wow. And that just just completely changed the directory of my life it just i would imagine it probably changed the direction of her life as well oh my yeah, god i mean everything was just so it just the whole thing was completely i just suddenly thought medicine's missing a trick and that was miraculous she it was solved the problem i don't think medicine would have been able to do i don't think that surgery would have helped her they didn't they didn't know they were just going to do their best i don't think it would have helped her and so to have done something so profound and just suddenly my brain just went yeah, like, I yeah. can't imagine anything more interesting or uh, more worthwhile to do with my life. And I ditched my TV career and I became a healer. <laughs> I have a teaching school. I just won Energy Training School of the Year as well. And I'm one of the best. And then uh, like Energy Healing Magazine, I'm one of the top healers of last year. I and teach I'm... everything that I do. So I basically mm. have a school which is something between an awakening school and its skills so it's like it's very important to learn these different things but learning how to dissolve trauma we do in level one in a it's yeah. a one day course and you learn how to do to, yeah the bigger razor is the energy of it but learning how to dissolve trauma and phobias you learn in day one and yeah. the stuff that we do on the like the second interestingly on the level two course which but the first four course, courses are a single day and level two no, number of times we the the students have cleared depression we mm. had one guy with depression for 27 years now with 27 year depression you take every pill you go to every shame and you do everything you could possibly imagine doing because that's no good uh, yeah. anyway so in class um i just went right this is this was april last year so this, i said um right everyone let's clear martin's depression clear, you guys clear martin's depression and everybody went what are you talking about, Antonia, you lunatic? 
And I was like, you know what to do. It's the same practice that we've done before. It's the same technique. You're just, all of you going to work together on, his, on it on him. And everyone went, it's not going to work. And I went, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Stop being scared of things not working. I think it's really important that we just play. And don't yep. worry too much about the outcomes. And I said, don't worry about it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Like worst case, what happened with my work is nothing happens. Best case, something amazing happens. But so there's nothing really to fear behind it. Anyway, they worked for about eight minutes on him, at five of them. And I said, look, after about eight minutes, I went, huh, looks like it's gone. Martin, how do you feel? And he went, the emptiness is gone and I feel cheerful. I said, when was the last time you felt cheerful? And he said, uh, about five months ago, but I had some, I'd had some beers. When was the last time you felt cheerful without the end of alcohol? Uh, I don't know, but it's been years. His depression is still gone. It's been a year and a half. He's not had a whisper of it. I checked on him a month ago. It's gone. Amazing. That's on level two. That's what my students do in level two. And we're getting more and more into physical illnesses as we get further on. So, yeah. So these are, these are skills that can be taught, not just uh, things that like... It's, yeah, we'll okay. it's, it's an awakening. So yeah. basically, my idea is we're all gods and goddesses who have no idea we're gods and goddesses. I just yeah. think we have no idea of our pure potential. And literally, we are just the most amazing divine beings as Christ consciousness coming through. I think we are incredible beyond belief. And yet we have no idea how to switch ourselves on. Mm. like we are just sitting there in this amazing spaceship without the key we just yeah. don't know how any of it works it's just uh-huh. i think we're just incredible gods and goddesses so i've spent the last 15 years largely in a trance state awakening my latent abilities and i literally i can't do anything there were some years where i could barely leave my bed when these energies were, were going around mm. but if i had something to do like my mom's birthday for example i'd wake up have loads of energy which is something not afforded to people with chronic fatigue syndrome for example yeah, yeah. so i um yeah so i spent a long time awakening my latent abilities abilities we all have and then what i do in class is just tick, 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 switch on abilities and then people can yeah. do it first time every time it's not a question of you not being able to do it once it's switched mm-hmm. on it's the easiest thing in the world to do it's easier than talking that's <laughs> i'm i'm so interested in this i absolutely love it and i really agree with you that uh man, are we just weighed down by a bunch of unnecessary shit, right? Like just all, we're so consumed with all these unnecessary priorities, right? And we just can't see how incredibly powerful we are. And that's your focus. So your focus but is our really- energy systems are actually switched off and they're switched off for a number yeah. of different things. I think some mm. of, I think we've got the trauma side and this day-to-day crap. I think that's yeah. one thing. But I yeah. also think there's two other factors. And I think one of them is the 20, uh, it's the- uh, how many years cycle? 20, uh, 25,000 year cycle. I think uh-huh. that, which is the um, procession of the equinox, I think we're literally coming into sp- actual space. Like uh, the way that our, the, our, the earth and the sun is going around, I think it's going around a black sun. And I think that our, our position within the universe is actually affecting us and the solar flares are affecting us. And I also think that there's some uh, malevolent forces who put blockages on us to stop us being powerful. So I think it's got, it's a tri-factor, our own shit, malevolent yeah. forces, and it was just coming into the, this right place in this, in this cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, unless you're exposed to someone like you, right? How could someone just know this, you know, unless they kind of get a little bit of like intuition perhaps and maybe Google it. But outside of that, I mean, these conversations or these topics, they're not readily available, not to your average layperson. And I, you know, I just, one of my missions is to get voices like yours out there and like, let's get talking about these things. And someone who has so much experience, uh, helping people who think that they don't have these abilities show them that they do and then just spreading it and spreading it and spreading it switching on they need switching on they're they're there they're just there but they just need switching on i don't know how to switch them on apart from what i do because there's two different types of magic which is an interesting one as well so there's something called lower level magic and high level magic now this isn't anything from me or anything from my own ego it's an ancient mystery schools term so Mm. that's what i'm referring to so The the one that you're probably familiar with is something called lower level magic. Now, every modality of healing that I've come across, 
apart from my own, is lower yeah. level magic. You're using an intermediary to help you do the work. So you're using mm. a spell or you're using um, an angel or some cards or a potion or mm. some sort of something or um, a ceremony of some description to help you do the work or you're using other people like the coven or whatever it might be or even Western allopathic medicine is using a pill or, or a potion, whatever. But you're using something in between you to do the work. So you're yeah. at some tool. That's low level magic. High level magic is different. You're, it's you doing it from your God self. Mm. So if you're having awoken your abilities, you can just do it by intention. So once I switch things on in people, they can do it immediately and by intention, first time and every time. <laughs> Amazing. So um, what are some of the, other than, well, the, the, it's, it sounds like the dissolving of traumas is like the easiest, right? If you just, you learn that level one, what are some of the, like, I don't know, more complex or complicated things that you heal? Okay. So let me talk to you about what disease is. Mm. I've got, I know what diseases are. So my, my tagline for that is disease is frozen trauma. Disease mm -hmm. is frozen trauma. Mm. So basically diseases come in three categories. You've got a gas based disease, a liquid based disease and a solid based disease. Mm. A, a gas based disease is a thought based disease because it's like when you hang around somebody sad or angry or upset, you can smell it on them. You know it immediately. You walk into mm. a room after an argument and my God, you can feel it. If you walk into a room after, after uh, like after your friend had sex, you can feel it, right? You can do, you just know the energy when these things are either good or bad or whatever you can feel. It. So gas just hangs around people in this way. So you've got a gas-based disease, which is a thought-based disease, or you've got a liquid-based disease. Now a liquid-based disease, think about what is a liquid in the body. Something like a fibromyalgia, a chronic mm. pain sci sciatica, it comes and goes, it moves, it flows, right? It's yeah. not always in the same place at all the time. And then think about a cyst. A cyst is a literal ball of fluid. That's mm. a liquid-based disease. So how, what's the difference between a gas and a liquid? How do you get a gas to become a liquid? Now that's about um, pressure. How, if you keep putting gas into a container, a sealed mm. container, eventually, a steam, for example, eventually it will become water. If you put enough of it in, it will cool down and it will slow down because the atoms are moving much slower mm. in water. So it's about how fast it's moving, how cold it is, mm. and the space, mm. right? So that's what happens. Your thoughts, being the gas, you keep thinking the same darned thought again and again and again and again. Your fixation will then, enough of that gas, enough of that thought will eventually become a liquid and it will appear as a liquid-based disease in your body. And if you keep going with that thought, if you keep that, that horrible reverse cheerleader telling you all sorts of nonsense about you're not good enough or you're stuck on some horrible thing that happened to you decades ago, enough thinking about that will cause matter. Thoughts have matter, it's the steam. And it goes into a liquid and then the liquid becomes a solid like a cancer. And what's a, how was the difference between a liquid and a solid? Same thing. Enough liquid goes in and it mm. runs out of space. It will mm. eventually become a solid. If you keep putting that gas in, it will eventually become a liquid and a solid. So it, disease is all based on thoughts. They're all caused by your repetitive thoughts. And if enough mm. of them over a long enough time, then that's what causes diseases like solid-based diseases, liquid-based diseases. So I'm good at liquid-based diseases. I'm having really good results with something like, I mean, I learned this myself with, a, I had an ovarian cyst mm. and then I checked it out. I've got a textbook that tells you the emotional why behind diseases. And I, um, and I managed, I worked that out and then I had a scan and it told me that I had this cyst. And then I, and I worked, I didn't know what it was. And then um, as soon as I know what something is and I can fix it until I know what it is, I have no idea what to do. Yeah. So, yeah. so then I managed to work on the emotions of it and it was gone within three days. And I could feel it was mm -hmm. gone because I, I, I felt it pop and then I was no longer in pain on my abdomen. So mm. that was completely gone. And then we're working towards solid-based diseases. I'm not 100% confident in them yet, but I'm doing very well with liquid-based diseases. I mean, I worked on something the other day with uh, uh, like uh, chronic fatigue. Mm. And I mean, the show after three days, she didn't have, she, her energy levels were really high and then she, mm. you know, was coming off her medication. Oh, People so tend not to... <laughs> I'm I'm doing some really good work. This like the last month I've been doing some really ridiculous, but actually two people with uh, with no uh, thyroid issues. Sorry, underactive mm. thyroid. I, mm. Yes, yeah, chronic fatigue for someone today. No, underactive thyroid. Those I've had two people when it seems to have gone within the last within about three days of me working on them. Yeah, and I just, I like I'm saying like you've got this student who's a doctor, and I just think that it's so I'm and like this, yeah. you take you take their um their medical school knowledge, and then you mix it with this 
knowledge, this wisdom, this old wisdom, it's, I mean, it, it's matching others, like showing others the way so that it can spread further and further and further. Like I need to break America. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> yes. yes, you do. You do. You do. We need you here. You know, we need a lot of healing here. This, uh, this environment is very toxic. You know, it's in it's toxic in our air, it's our water, our communication. Your our... Really, I mean, your food is weird. Like on anything that lasts as long as your food does is not natural. A <laughs> no, baguette, it's not natural. A baguette, a French bread, a baguette is supposed yeah. to last one day. I'm yeah. telling you, you buy it on the day, it's gone by the end of the day. You go to Whole Foods or Whole Paycheck, as they call it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> it lasts it lasts a week. A baguette yeah. lasting a week is not French bread. This is not right. Right. That is not tr- that you know. I, and that's a really food. mild, right? That's really mild because here everything's like that's a a like a, a week old baguette is like yeah that's like not even a big deal. I'm talking like the really processed but stuff. That's supposed to be natural. That's supposed yeah. to be natural. But yeah, the, yeah, I mean you're eating all this food which is never no, not anything like a food. It's not food. No. No, it's not food. Well, we have ingredients that are outlawed in your country. Your country is like, no, we're definitely not going to feed our citizens these horrible chemicals. And we're like, oh, we'll feed it to them. Don't worry. Don't yeah. worry. You, die know, you, love, you love chemicals in the growing process as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, I mean, you know, when if we're discussing healing, we you have to you have to talk about the the, the what we nourish our bodies with, what we actually whole foods. Eat. Whatever it is, it needs to be whole foods. You know, yes, it, just, it doesn't matter what people want to do. But then the, the closer you are to nature, the closer you are mm. to vegetables and things yeah. which haven't been processed ten times. Like the more processing, I mean, I love pizza. I love pizza. Yeah, but yeah, if you think doesn't. about all the different and we. It's not very good for you and sugar's not avoid wheat and yeah. sugar but yeah. you know the number of processes to get that to make a pizza you know it's like the more, the more processes of the flour to get the flour and then you're what, what you're doing cooking the flour and everything else it's got so many processes to it's terrible well and the cheese i mean the cheese too like what like how it becomes cheese from its starting place is like it goes through so many so many actually horrific things um but yeah so really if, if you know to approach health you know, what's health? I mean, health is the mind, body, and spirit, and you can't get there without discussing the food thing. And absolutely America's in the, I don't know, it's in the, it's in the toilet as far as that goes. Um, so I think your, your expertise and, uh, energy is absolutely needed here. 100%. I think that you, uh, do you have any plans to come here and like try and expand your school? I would love to. Thing? Yeah. I would love to. I've got a Canadian student. I've got a couple of students in um, in America at the moment as well. Yeah. I'd love to come over there. But the thing is, I don't know what's going on with travel restrictions and everything else at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you but might not I be able to teach leave. online. Look, the thing is, if I have enough people, I, every, everything I do nowadays, I teach online. Yeah. Everything's on Zoom. So mm. I would be happy to do one in an American time zone. I do it on the, you know, the yeah. Pacific time zone. So it's stupid o'clock for me but fine for you if I've got like five ten students and I don't mind doing it I'm happy yeah. to stay up and, and do it but I don't do things in you know everything's online anyway so yeah. if, people, if there's an audience for it then I'm happy to do it all across America or whatever in that time zone I've done it yeah. done it before and you know I've got students all over the world so yeah, yeah. But I mean, my um, my students had visions about me being on a tour bus and was doing loads of healings and stuff. Oh, well, that would be great. I mean, we, you know, yes, absolutely. But not right anything. now, not with everything closed. No, no, closed. no, 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 not right now. It's it just it would be more of a hassle, and there'd be so many things to jump through and red tape and. You know, and and it changes from city to city here because here in America, like from state to state. The, the laws, the rules, the regulations, the mandates, yeah, like everything. You, 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 in one state, you could be, you know, mask free. And then the very next state, you've got to have a vaccine even to walk in the door. So it's so like all over the place here that, yeah, that's you know, just really you'll have to just, you'll have to just wait until we we'll um, do it via it Zoom, but we'll do it by yes. Zoom. I'm happy to do, do it by that. Zoom. That's the easiest thing anyway, because it saves everybody money, you know, them yeah. traveling and everything else. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. you know, yeah. venue costs and all the rest of it makes everything more expensive. Keeps the cost mm-hmm. down and people can sit in their living room. Exactly. And then, and, I, you know, I'm a big fan of showing up, you know, in your pajamas and, uh, and, and learning or working or whatever, you know, I mean, I work with clients all the time and I tell them like, just, I don't care what you wear. Like, this is not, let's just be, come, you know, 
all natural. I'll sometimes show up to, you know, calls with, you know, in my PJ still, why not? You know, it's, I, I pretty much live in yoga clothes these days anyway. So. And might be wearing yeah. yoga pants. Yes. <laughs> and slippers. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Perfect. Perfect. See, and that's the thing, like the waist down, like who cares what you're wearing? Yeah. You know? I'm wearing a nice shirt, but yoga pants. And exactly. And your hair looks so good. I love your hair. It looks, Thank it's you. very flattering. It's very flattering. Um, yes. Yeah. So what are like the next steps for you? So I get it. Besides coming to America, I mean, are you going to like, do you want to write a book? Do you want to do a movie? Like what kind of oh, stuff I'm, do you I'm have? I'm working on a book deal, but the problem, hmm. my problem right now is to get myself a book deal, I need to have 250 likes per post on, on Instagram. Oh. Per figure. So okay. I need to get a wider audience. I need to get more likes on, on Instagram. As soon as I get that, then I can get a book deal. So that's in the cards. That, I'm really, yeah, go on. Question. Uh, so is that a requirement from the publishers? Yes. Oh, wow. Interesting. But I'm, uh, that's got to be a new, like, <laughs> you have to have a certain number of likes on Instagram to, for us to that's even. To get, to, from a book agent. Yeah, from, mm -hmm. a, from, yeah, so I have to, well, the thing is, it depends what you're trying to do. I don't want to yeah. self-publish because I wanted to get it out to a, a wide audience, but you have right. to have your, yourself an audience before they'll take you on. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of press. I have, these are all press articles yeah. and magazines that I've been in. I've, I'm in over a hundred press articles. Mm -hmm. so I've done a but lot it's of hard right now isn't Instagram having like do you have trouble with you know with the algorithm do you have trouble like um I, it, I honestly I'm shooting I'm just I'm just shooting randomly I yeah. have no idea how it yeah. works I did one yesterday and it got 100 it's got 160 likes and I did one that one an hour before and it's got 30 I don't yeah. understand it I don't either I don't either I the same thing happens with me on Facebook where I I think okay I'm gonna you know there's little tricks that you can do and then nope nothing and I'm like really you know so I'm like there's no way nobody liked that post I mean I'm five people no one you know hours later so i don't know i don't have it figured out at all um i don't know if it's i don't know what's going on with it or maybe it's me i don't know <laughs> probably I not can't figure it out some of yeah. them go really well and you, and you write a really beautiful piece and you think it's going to go great and then no one likes it i don't know you know the thing is though is that maybe it doesn't show up in likes or things like that but people are listening and people are yeah. watching and myself included you and I haven't spoken in a really, really long time. And then just, I don't even know where your post came from, kind of out of nowhere on my, on my timeline. And I thought, oh, wow, like she is, her perspective is very similar to mine. And I resonated with a lot of the things that you were sharing and talking about and, you know, just the memes and all that stuff. And I'm like, hmm. So and I, I don't know, maybe I only liked one or two that I saw, like physically push the button, but I was reading them and connecting yeah, yeah. with you. So know that even people that aren't physically touching their phone to like the post are watching. And Thank listening. you, but I, it and doesn't listening. matter we get a book deal. I know, it doesn't, I know, I know, I know. Just just motivation to keep going no matter what you're doing, you're, you're affecting people. So, you know, but what would your book be about? Tell me. About the when you get it published about what disease is like mm. how to uh, the spiritual evolution yeah just basically how i see disease and what what's going on people's energy systems yeah and where we're going yeah um, i love I don't I know know I can write, write a whole book on it though because i've pretty much explained it i i like to simplify things i don't know how i can say things a thousand times i already wrote half a book but then i i'm not going to put it out don't know well i think that <laughs> the rest of the stuff is downloaded into you, right? Like everything you've learned so far has been, has been downloaded. Right? I can write, so honestly, I did it before. I, I was, I got uh, some of my, uh, my UK, I've got some, uh, some friends who've written some books in the UK and yeah. they, they bullied me into writing a book. So I just started writing a book yeah. and actually yeah. I've still got it, but I haven't done anything with it. Um, but you know, there was one day I wrote 10,000 words. And I just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote, it's a 50,000 word book. It's already there. So I just went like that, but it mm. doesn't look like we're, we're going to use it at the moment. But I, you know, I don't, I, one side, I don't think there's a wrong way. way. You can write more than one. Like it doesn't have to just be one and done. I think like, we're going to do a trilogy. I think that's what, you know. is it a psychic who said that? Was it my PR? I think it might have been both. <laughs> Maybe you should hire a psychic PR. 
Maybe. You I know, know. Mine was really good. I've had a, yeah. you know all these yeah. different articles. So I see that. I see that. I mean, I just I I love that you're out there and getting noticed by people. I just because what you're doing, I feel is really important. I know you feel it's really important, but I I can see the value, like the value for humanity, not just you know light surface stuff, but like for the for all of us. Uh, do you know what the thing is? Once yeah. you've cleared your trauma, and that's what mm -hmm. like the, the basics of what we do is dissolve trauma. Mm -hmm. When you have when you don't have trauma, you're less of a dick to yeah. everybody. Yeah. I mean, like for that reason alone, it's mm -hmm. worth doing because you just don't get tweaked in the same way. You don't freak out and you don't just misbehave and mistreat yeah. people. You yeah. know, hurt people hurt people. Mm. So if you're not hurt anymore, you're just nice. And it's yeah. difficult for me, like, you know, occasionally I'll get frustrated with somebody, but it, it can't stay in my system. My vibration mm. is too high mm. and mm. it just falls out of me. And you just become so much happier. Like kids who have had maybe stressful upbringings, maybe their parents are alcoholics or, or sick or there's some sort of difficulty. They've mm. They become very serious mm. and that's the thing they become super serious and it's very stern and that's what happens when you've had a load of trauma you become serious we need to get rid of all that start having a bit more fun start being a bit more free and a bit more open and a bit more childlike still taking on adult responsibilities and being a grown-up when you need to be but still just being more open and loving and generous of heart because that's what it is when you're more awake it's more like being a child that wonderment innocence of like things are just like you can really get excited about things and yeah. play yeah. and still, yeah. you know do your grown-up stuff too absolutely you can't just be like be divorced from it all but you just everything becomes a lot softer and mm. you just don't react to things and everything just becomes more fun what was the last thing you got excited about like you were like in childlike wonder what was the last thing <laughs> Um, I, I haven't announced this publicly yet, but okay. I started playing so something weird's happened to our energy systems in level uh, my level seven class. Mm. Um, we don't have chakras, meridians, aura, uh, Merkaba, uh, assemblage point. Um, like my whole of my energy system, like meridians, like the whole, like the traditional en energy system that everybody else has got has gone because we've done it, um, an initiation, which is like being a sarcophagus of the great pyramid. Mm -hmm. It's that ancient mystery schools, um, uh, ancient mystery schools uh, initiation. And so now my energy system now has wings. I have wings and a great ball of fire. Wow. People who can see it, people who are really psychic, can actually see my energy system and see these huge, great wings by the side of me in this great ball of fire, which is something to do with the toroidal thing, you know, that donut, uh, the toroidal thing. I'm quite trying to figure that out, but I'm I'm wondering where that's going to be going as well, because I think that's a more holistic energy system. But I, I think that all these chakras and meridians and all those different parts are actually little prisons. Your, mm. your system is like put compartmentalize that bit there, that bit there, that bit there, that bit there. And rather than being whole, and I think it's meant to be whole, I think it's meant to be this one big wings and this this big sphere. And that's what we're supposed to be, not these little compartments. I think it's keeping us small and keeping us unevolved. So that Amazing. was pretty cool when I got wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like getting wings would be pure magic and so I know, exciting. But then, yeah, and then what does that actually mean? I'm wondering for levitation and things in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wait, so I saw something, speaking mm -hmm. of uh, levitation, um, this is in the same vein. I saw something the other day you posted, um, I think it was on your story. It was like this bending spoon Sunday with Antonia. That's in level and two. There's a talk to me about talk to me about bending spoons, please. There's probably a bent spoon. I, I had to tidy my room. I'm selling my house, so I normally yeah. have a bent spoon right next to me. There's yeah. always yeah. a bent spoon around me. Um, uh, yeah. So in level two, I teach you how to do matter, you know, matter manipulation, and teach you how to bend spoons. That's in my level two class. So it's basically it just makes it. Um, it makes the metal super super soft, and so metal that you're going. You yeah. know, you can bend yeah. it with some brute force. You just go, boop, and it bends like that. Wow. 
Oh yeah, and that's the party trick. I mean, the, in level one, we've got learning how to take change the taste of wine or grape juice. It's mm. really interesting, and it becomes a completely different sort of wine. Or interestingly, a grape juice you put oak into, and it tastes like wine. It's really, really interesting wow. that one. Yeah, changing the taste of wine and grape juice is really, really, really cool because it tastes completely, completely different. And you have all yeah. these different glasses from the same bottle or carton next to each other and they are completely different it's amazing and are they different to, like so so the the person um it, that's like say looking at the eight glasses in front of them and uh with their mind like uh, do you use your mind what do you how well, do you yeah, do what we do is we normally we have a control glass and we just make mm -hmm. sure that we have that and that's the original bottle and we mm -hmm. just keep that there and then we pour like three glasses out in front of us and we just say to add a different flavor so i always start with uh, we do oak, we do licorice, or we do uh, tobacco. And okay. those are three wine flavors. We're just doing it. We're adapting it with grape juice so people don't drink. Um, so we do one of those, and they can normally taste that. And then we'll start with, normally with the Melbeck wine, and then we'll make one into a Pinot Noir, which is very light, and one into like a Barolo, which is a heavy wine. And you have three glasses in front of you, um, and they taste or three or four glasses in front of you, and they taste completely different. And you try one of them, you have some water, try them the next one, try, try some mm. water, it works just mm. as well grape juice. But it's just absolutely amazing because you have four glasses of completely, completely different wine. All poured from the same bottle. All poured from the same bottle. Incredible. It's really Incredible. fun. I'll have to show you sometime, but it's really fun. You can bring some grape juice and we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the grape juice for me these days. Um, not so much 17 years ago, but these days, uh, these days, definitely grape juice. But it works. I mean, could you it do it? I, mean, I would imagine you could do it with any juice um, or is um, it something about grape? The grape, grape juice is, is, is the best one to be doing mm -hmm. because it's just got, it's it's what is basically wine without the alcohol, isn't it? So it's got the yeah. sort of depth of flavor in it. It's, yeah. it's just not a million miles away. For, so if you add oak to it, it makes sense. If you add oak to apple juice, it's just a bit strange. Yeah, it would know? be strange. No, it wouldn't be anything like you'd normally, you know, yeah, that you've ever had before. You so can what do you do? So, <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Um, what do you do to take care of yourself? Because it sounds like you are giving to a lot of people. Um, what do you do to take care of yourself? I'm moving to the beach. <laughs> I'm buying a beach house. That's my that'll beach do it. care of myself. Yeah, I'm in the, yeah, I'm in the process do it. of moving. But, um, um, I, I need to buy the sea. I need to yeah. buy the sea because of the energy of the water. Mm -hmm. it, really in, it grounds and integrates the work. So that's what I need to be doing for me. Um, so I, you know, then you, you just do self-care. I, I make sure I eat well. That's really important. I make sure I sleep a lot. Uh, yeah. I make sure I have fun. Yeah. Fun is really, really important to me. I need fun because I my job's really serious. You know, mm. I am really dissolving a lot of problems for a lot of people. And it's, you know, it's quite a lot. So I just need to be fun. And I mean, like, yeah, I just need to go out and have crazy times and just be wild and good. As yeah, well. yeah, and yeah, so yeah absolutely. I mean, we always had fun, right? Like just, you know, but uh, the, the I guess the the intention was a little bit different back then. Yeah. But to unload you know I guess it was probably always the with the intention of unloading the heaviness right and even way back then um do you ever find that you while dissolving someone else's trauma do you ever soak it in does it ever get stuck to you never that would okay, suck yeah. I'm not doing yeah, that. No, no I'm way. not playing that game. No way. No, no. No, honestly, I just it's not very much of a bother to me. It's quite easy to me. I'm mm. just I can I mean, yeah, I can just do it quite passively. Because you don't integrate with it. It's not like you integrate with their trauma to dissolve it. It's I you're able to do it, it to a different dimension. I portal yeah. it to a different dimension and I feed it to multidimensional beings. And love them it. It's junk recycle. food. I just dump it off. It's junk food. They love it. Everybody's happy. I like situations where everybody wins because yeah. you, you know you, you just don't want to go and give it somewhere else and um and then just leave it so like it's part of shit for somebody else no yeah. it's, it's junk food which they i pulled all the beings to basically a five-star resort like the ritz carlton mm. in the bahamas imagine it yeah. like them for them yeah. they get sent there and then i just jump and I just like sneak them in some junk food here and there nice. which they're very, very nice. i'm sure do they ever repay you they should um i've got a big team behind me so okay good I, you know instead of because i used to these multi-dimensional beings are quite important in diseases and i used to slay them mm. and actually that's not very ethical um and mm. it's just it's not very nice so instead of slaying them i portaled them out and then i portaled them food in so mm. so now i'm basically a divine now it's more of like a symbiotic relationship right like you, you kind of help each other i'm a divine travel agent 
I love it. <laughs> I love it. I portal them out, but they're there mm. and they're staying where they are. But instead of having, yeah. I mean, a lot of, um, you know, there, there could be vendettas and people coming after me or people mm. coming off, or beings mm. coming after my students and revenge. Mm. If I'm just going and slaying everything, then there's a lot of revenge and oh, who's got time for that? So I just, I just prefer to be a divine travel agent. Oh dear. I prefer to be a, um, a divine travel agent mm. and then like, and then beings have all got my back because I think, yeah, you know, they think yeah. This is right. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, you're on their side or at least uh, neutral, you know, yeah. absolutely. Um, well, they so get taken to the Bahamas. I mean, whether if, if you're sort of living off scrap. So I think that, mm. um, that you have, you know, if you would have chatty minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That chatty mind isn't them. There's a multidimensional being saying all sorts of nonsense to you to feed on your mm -hmm. emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because I can actually shut down people's, I can put a force field around people's brains and make their brains completely quiet. And then they can see who they are without this chatter. And it's wow. these beings who are saying all sorts of nonsense to people. I'll show you sometime. Yeah. But it's these beings who are saying all sorts of nonsense to people. So what I do is I portal these beings out. But they're mm. living off scraps and they're living off this emotional energy called louche. And what they're actually doing is every time you have a negative thought about yourself or somebody else, it unwinds your DNA. It physically, Leonard Lewowski discovered this stuff, it unwinds your DNA. And that's really interesting because then photons, particles of light get released. And this is what the entities feed on. They feed on sort of mm. louche, which is particles of light from the unwinding of your DNA. So they will just nag you reverse cheerlead you say all sorts of nonsense until you get stressed out till you get so you start acting out with somebody mm. else and then they feed on that and that's what that the loose mechanism is so in, so then people are just basically eaten alive by these multi-dimensional beings but these beings are just hungry so we yeah. don't have to judge them about that and you'd steal a loaf of bread same as me if my family mm. was starving of course you yeah. So instead of judging them, slaying them, causing all problems, I just go, hey, would you like to go to the Bahamas? Would you like yeah. to just live in like a five-star resort, never-ending food and everything you want in the Bahamas? And everyone says yes, rather than basically living in a sewer and, mm. you know, having to hurt people to, to do, you know, to eat. I just take yeah. them over there and then I'm a divine travel agent rather than a slayer and everybody wins. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So who do you, who do you, so you're a teacher and you yes. teach a lot. Hmm. Who do you learn from? God. God. Yeah. Do you have any human shaped teachers that or, or um, muses or, or people that you one. find I, um, helpful? Only, I, I, only one, but that's for his brain. That's David Wilcock. I'm a huge, huge fan mm. of David Wilcock. I think he's bloody brilliant. I wish mm. he was my friend. I would love David. If you're listening, I want to be your friend. I think you're mm. amazing. And I based a lot of my work on what it, what the, mm. on the ama amazing wisdom that he's brought me. A lot yeah. of the stuff that I've learned is from him. And yeah. I've actually managed to manifest the teachings that he's given me. I managed to bring them into the physical. Um, apart from that, I don't really, because I don't want things to be too corrupted by other people's techniques and things yeah. it's yeah. useful to me because most people are using lower level magic he's mm. using he's combining combining science and spirituality that that combination there and then i'm manifesting that afterwards so i'm almost like his baby <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely or, or like um uh what's it called um oh i can't think of the word my stupid brain um Oh, an apprentice, that thing. An there. apprentice, yeah. Yes. I feel like David's yeah. apprentice, and yeah, I've yeah. never met him. Yeah, yeah. I think he's we don't know, whether you do or not, you know, uh, obviously what he is doing in his space is affecting you in your space, and you've created your own thing out of oh, it. He wants um, to, he'll, he'll want to know me because I can show him the magic that he talks about. I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure he would want to know you. What you are actually going on about? I can show you, my friend. Yeah. Let me teach you. I would love to. We'd have such great fun. I'm telling oh, I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm friend, sure he would love you. I'm sure and he his would wife that. looks amazing too. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, so, uh, so can you talk about like um, what's the name of your school? Like, how could people find you? Divine Empowerment. Okay. UK, and I've also bought the dot com. So divineempowerment.com will get you to me. Yeah. Um, if anyone's interested, if anyone, because I know your audience is mainly American, um, mm. it's not on my website to do classes uh, in an American mm. time zone. But if people message me and they want to, then yeah. I'm absolutely happy to do that. And it's just an Antonia at divineempowerment.com. No, awesome. So do you do uh, one on one sessions with people? Do you like yeah, yeah. Talk them that way? 
So we've got a variety of different things depending what you're looking mm. for. So you can get one-to-ones with me. I've got loads of practitioners who are my mm. students who are level four or upwards. They're, they're, they're mm. called practitioners. Level eight is advanced practitioners. So um, you can book in with me for a one-to-one. You can book in with them if you'd like to pay slightly less money and still get the same mm. quality. Um, or you can come and learn it for yourselves. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I think all of the above. I think somebody should get a taste of it. Right. I mean, is, would you recommend someone get a taste of it and then go and learn it themselves or? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? I mean, that's a really good idea. If you look at my YouTube, which is the same mm-hmm. thing, Antonio Harmon or Divine Empowerment, you'll find, just put that in Google. You'll find me everywhere. I'm not difficult to find my Instagram is the same. Uh, Antonio yeah. underscore Harmon. I'm easy to find. But yeah, if you, I mean, if you, you can see me in action because you can watch the videos on my Instagram, on my Instagram mm. lives, um, or, or my YouTube, and you can see people's reactions and what's going on. Some of them you can follow along to and actually get your, some of your traumas dissolved if you're watching mm. the videos. So mm. you can do that too. I also do semi-regular sort of Instagram lives. I'm going to be doing something on depression shortly. Mm. I decided to do, I'm going to do one on Sunday and I'm just going to clear as many people who want to as depression all in one go. I've never done this before. I'm going to do up to 20 people's depression in one go on set on Sunday. That's incredible. So are you going to pick the 20 people ahead of time or the first 20 people that show up to your live or how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to do it. I, I can't do it on a live because I need people to oh. be there the whole time and it's too difficult ah. to do it on a live. I've yeah. already, no, I, I did a post yesterday that got so popular. It had 150 likes on it. And then I said, and I said in the bottom, you know, because it was um, World Mental Health Day yesterday. Mm, yeah. And I said, if anyone's got depression, let me know and I'll do a competition. All these people wrote their name. I said, you know, I will do one healing for one person in this competition. And loads of people entered. And I felt really bad because I thought, oh, I can't just let everyone else have depression and do one yeah. person. So I thought, stuff right. it. I'll just do 20. So I've got about half of them now. So, we, you know, I've, I've still got space on it at the moment. So I are do you, so how are you going to do it? Like in what, in what forum? Are you just going to film gonna it do in a, person? Um, a Zoom. A Zoom oh, Okay. Call. Awesome. Just You're going to post Zoom. that as a video? Like, I mean, um, just so how people can watch that? Yeah, I'm going to put it on my YouTube. So I only just decided to do this this afternoon. So I'm going to see, I'm going to put on my Instagram story and invite some more people because I've still got some spaces. I need to do all that this week. And it's going to be on Sunday. And then I'm going to record it and put it onto YouTube. Yeah. I've never I think- done it before. I'd like 20 people depression. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And and how, oh, so that was the other question I was going to ask you. Like, how long is it, like, it's a session? Like, how long does that take to, say, dissolve one person's depression? They, they're with you. How long does it take you? Uh, I mean, I, I would, I've up to 50 minutes, probably less. Yeah. Wow. Often so, 10 minutes, but I can't yeah. guarantee it. But right, 50 no, minutes would be definite, but like under an hour for it not to go in 50 minutes. Honestly, say. honestly though, under an hour, uh, you know, it's normally about 10, 15 minutes, but wow. you know, I would book in for an hour uh, for 50 minutes just because, you know, there's a few other things that might need to be gone as well at the same time. Sure, so, sure, sure. But, sure yeah, sure. I, you, you, the, the amount that you get in 50 minutes will blow your socks off. Cause I end up fixing various different things that are going, most people have got multiple traumas or multiple diseases yeah. or multiple mm-hmm. problems. Mm. I tend to just work my, my butt off and yeah. clear everything. <laughs> Thank you so much, and um, and I can't, I can't wait to have you on again. And please check out Antonio underscore uh, Harmon on Instagram. And, Antonio uh, underscore Harmon, yeah. Harmon, yes. Can you spell your last name just so people make sure that they get the right one? Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's Antonia, A-N-T-O-N-I-A, and then underscore Harman, H-A-R-M-A-N, Harman. And my yeah. company's Divine Empowerment. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. And and to the watchers and the love. listeners, thank you for joining us on another episode of my best day, best day of my life podcast with Susanna. And Tony has been my awesome guest and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASA. NASA increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.